Today's video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. More on them in just a bit. Today, unlock the secrets of the universe and discover the fascinating world of black holes. From their mysterious formation to their role in the creation of life to their potential as a form of propulsion, Romulans anybody? Black holes have captivated the minds of scientists and lay people alike. Explore the theories behind the information paradox and the black hole sun. Delve into the mysterious realm of dark matter and its potential connection to primordial black holes. It's all coming up in today's video, so let's go! Since we first heard the name, people have been fascinated with the idea of black holes. First theorized by Albert Einstein as a consequence of his theory of general relativity, a black hole is a region of space in which matter and energy have become so condensed and gravity is so high that even light can't escape. In regions of space like this, the laws of physics break down. And what happens inside? Well, no one's sure. And we've even actually obtained photographs of real-life black holes proving that these incredible cosmological monsters really do exist. And here are five of the strangest. Einstein himself struggled with the implications of the idea that nothing could escape from a black hole. You see, his theory also implied that while matter and energy are essentially the same things, neither matter nor energy can ever really be destroyed, only changed. Scientists first believed that because of their collapsed nature, all black holes would appear from the outside to be exactly the same, having only three qualities, mass, charge, and spin. If black holes are eternal and will never disappear, this doesn't violate general relativity. Things can fall into a black hole, but they will still exist. They're just in a place that we can't see. But what if they shrink over time, losing tiny bits of their energy somehow? Indeed, very early studies of possible black holes seem to suggest that they were not completely black. Instead, they radiated very high energy particles. This presented a huge problem for physics and mathematics. This is because in quantum mechanics, there seems to be a fundamental law of nature that says that information cannot be destroyed. However, if a black hole sucks matter and energy into itself and radiates this as random energy, then this fundamental law of quantum mechanics seems to be broken. It was not until the 1970s that physicist Stephen Hawking proposed a solution to the information paradox. He accomplished this not by discovering some new area of physics, but rather by reasoning out how classical physics, Einstein's relativity, and quantum mechanics might work together if they ever possibly could work together. What if, Hawking argued, a black hole wasn't truly black? What if the information contained within could leak out of a black hole via quantum hair? This would take the form of radiation, causing the black hole to lose energy over time and thus release the information that it had stored up, albeit in a hopelessly scrambled state. This energy, which we now call Hawking radiation, is now known to exist. We now know that black holes can evaporate and spread the information they have gathered over billions of years into space via this Hawking radiation. If Hawking was right, it should be possible in theory to study the energy that comes out of a black hole and in doing so, reconstruct information about what had fallen into it. While doing so would be enormously complex and is probably beyond the technical capabilities of any imaginable intelligent species, it's not technically impossible. Even more amazingly, as a black hole gets smaller, this loss of energy speeds up, and that leads us actually to our next amazing discovery. Another outcome of Hawking's discovery is that we now know it should be possible to create artificial black holes. These Kugelblitzes, black holes composed of pure energy, could weigh as little as several thousand tons and still be microscopic in size. A Kugelblitz is smaller, weighing only about as much as an entire modern skyscraper. And remember, it's microscopic. Remember how the energy loss of black holes speeds up as it gets smaller? Well, at this mass, a black hole is losing a huge part of its remaining mass to energy every second. While a skyscraper may not seem to contain huge amounts of energy, a black hole is capable of transforming 100% of the mass of any object into energy, and there is a lot, and we really do mean a lot of energy, inside even the smallest amount of matter. The mass of an average human body contains an incredible 5.6 times 10 to the power of 12 mega of energy. It's almost impossible to fathom how much energy that really is, but it's about 25 times more than the Saar bomber, the most powerful nuclear weapon ever tested. A Kugelblitz could output an incredible amount of energy. Enough, if it could be captured somehow and redirected to be used as a form of propulsion, to power a starship to 99% the speed of light. 
Thanks to the time dilating effects of near light speed travel, a starship flying at 99% the speed of light could cross the galaxy in as little as two subjective years from the perspective of the person on the ship and return home before the Kugelblitz burns itself out, a process that would take about five years, although home definitely wouldn't be there when you got back. But don't pack your bags just yet. At our current technology level, it would take us something like 200 million years of the total output of the entire world's energy supplies to form a single Kugel Blitz. We have a long way to go before we ever master the levels of energy needed to create them practically. But if we could create them, Kugel Blitzes could serve as a source of fuel for starships powerful enough to approach the speed of light, allowing human beings to explore the cosmos. A Kugel Blitz could be made using the energy from a star focused into an extremely powerful laser, which could create a gravitational singularity small enough to be used as the engine of a starship. And it's all because black holes have hair. Are you tired of bulky old-fashioned wallets that weigh you down and don't even protect your cards from digital thieves? Well. Let me introduce you to the Ridge Wallet and also, oh, it's in my pocket, the Ridge Key Case. With over 30 colors and styles, the Ridge Wallet is perfect for anyone's taste. Not only that, this wallet is super slim and it can hold up to 12 cards. I don't know who has 12 cards. I have like three cards in here, just bank cards and a driver's license, basically. It also holds cash in the back. I have no cash in there because... And I'm not a big cash person these days, but you know, just in case you need it, throw a little under the little clip thing there, easy. And like I say, it keeps you safe from digital thieves with its RFID blocking technology, which means that no one is going to be able to digitally pickpocket you, which is nice. And like I say, it's slim, it fits in your pocket, it doesn't ruin the line of a jacket, it just stays there, it doesn't make your arse like a big welt attached to it, that kind of thing. Also, 50,000 five star reviews, lots of different stars. That one I just had is the black one. This is burnt titanium, I was using that one for a long time. And also I've used this carbon one as well. Lots of different stars for everybody's taste. It's also got a lifetime warranty. And like I say, the key case, these are my work keys on here. And that's just also perfect. They just slide in here like a little Victorian Ox uh, Swiss knife. Beautiful, pen knife. That's what the generic name is. So what are you waiting for? Upgrade your wallet game today with the Ridge Wallet and Keycase. Just go to ridge.com forward slash side projects. Use the code side projects and you get a 10% discount. There's also a link below. And now back to today's video. Ever since the discovery of Sagittarius A, the enormous black hole at the center of our galaxy that weighs over 4 million solar masses, scientists have debated how exactly it got there. To understand why it's such a mystery, we have to know how black holes form. And to know that, we need to know a little bit about star formation. Stars form from clouds of gases in nebulas, composed mostly of hydrogen and helium, either left over from the Big Bang at the beginning of our universe, or from the explosions of large first-generation stars, usually blue giants, many, many times larger than our own sun. When a star gets big enough, the force of gravity at the center of this cloud of gas kicks off nuclear fusion, forcing atoms of hydrogen together to form helium. Helium then comes together to form carbon, and carbon together to form iron. The fusion of these elements generates the energy that makes stars hot and bright. When a star that's big enough, about three times larger than our sun, runs out of nuclear fuel and has a core that's mostly composed of iron, it can collapse in on itself and form a neutron star, which is a star with several times the masses of our sun, but is only about 10 miles, that's 17 kilometers across, with its mass now compressed into a soup of neutrons, electrically neutral particles. One of two things can then happen. Either the neutron star can ignite its remaining superheated hydrogen gas in a cataclysmic explosion called a supernova, spreading heavy elements across a wide region of space, or it can collapse completely in on itself to form a black hole, a region in space so high in gravity that nothing, not even light, can escape. Now, we've observed these supernovas in our own and other galaxies because they shine brighter than the rest of a whole galaxy combined. But this does not explain how black holes with millions of solar masses form in the center of galaxies. Now, black holes have an incredibly high gravity, but they aren't actually capable of growing that quickly. Once a black hole forms, the tidal force created by the difference in gravity experienced by anything that gets close to it is so extreme that it can turn whatever it encounters into hot plasma, not unlike the substance of a star itself. This plasma can orbit the black hole, but it quickly builds up and creates something of a barrier between the event horizon, the point of no return for an object falling into it, and the outside world. In this way, black holes are self-limiting in size. They cannot simply gobble up everything around them because they have a halo of extremely high-energy plasma 
plasma, which acts to keep objects away from the event horizon. But we may understand how the super-large black holes in the center of galaxies form anyway. Introducing the black hole sun, a kind of star that can no longer form in our universe, but may once have formed in the center of most galaxies. Imagine a gas cloud in the early universe with a mass of many millions of stars. It's possible that these clouds once formed enormous, unimaginably large stars. These early stars could have been so large that they would have dwarfed our entire solar system. These stars could have been so enormous that by the time they accumulated enough iron in their cores to form a black hole, their outer regions could have all been composed of hydrogen and helium, forming a kind of shell of a giant star around a growing heart of darkness. This combines two very important effects. First, the bigger a black hole is, the more slowly it evaporates. And the second, the bigger it is, the stronger its gravitational force. In this scenario, the tidal force of the black hole inside would not be large enough to cause the rest of the star to go supernova. Instead, the black hole would form what's called a gentle singularity, a black hole that is so large that it leaks very little energy. The weight of the outer shell of the star would counterbalance the inner black hole's tidal forces, and a black hole star would have been created. As these black hole stars grew their inner black holes, the tidal forces of the event horizon would have caused them to swell to sizes up to 30 times larger than our entire solar system. If anyone was to see them, they would not only be the brightest stars in the night sky, they would actually be about as bright as our moon. When the accretion disk of the black hole finally became too powerful for its star shell, it would have exploded in a cosmic display of power that we can't possibly imagine. It would have been an event visible across the entire universe. And it's possible that every spiral galaxy we can now see once experience something like this. What is left of these black hole stars are the hearts of the modern galaxies, weighing the equivalent of millions of suns and forming the basic structure of our visible universe. It's possible that thanks to the launch in 2022 of the James Webb Telescope, that we'll be able to look far back into our universe's past to witness a real-life black hole star. If we can, then this will change our understanding of the fundamental structure of the universe as we know it. It's possible that the presence of heavy metals, and consequently of life itself, is thanks to these primordial supergiants. Though we've been studying them for decades, there's still quite a lot we obviously don't know about black holes. One of the things that we've yet to fully work out is the relationship, if there is any, between black holes and dark matter. For a time, physicists like Stephen Hawking theorized that dark matter, the invisible substance that seems to make up most of the mass in the universe, but also doesn't seem to interact with anything else except via gravity, could in fact be primordial black holes. These dark holes might have formed in the very early universe as a consequence of the incredible energy of cosmic inflation than the Big Bang. If they did, there might be trillions upon trillions of these tiny black holes wandering the universe. They would be around the size of a baseball and have the mass equivalent of a planet like Earth. That would make them incredibly difficult to see, since their tidal forces would not be strong enough to create a matter halo around their event horizons. Light would simply pass right by them, barely affected unless it sank directly into the black hole's event horizon. For decades, two camps in astrophysics debated the nature of dark matter. Some believed in WIMPs, standing for weakly interacting massive particles, and others in MATROs, standing for massive compact halo objects. These MATROs, unlike typical black holes, could even be comprised of a kind of exotic matter, such as heavy neutrinos, a neutral particle that doesn't interact much with normal matter, which might help explain why they appear to have so much gravitational influence, and yet they do not seem to interact at all with light that passes near them. If the dark matter of the universe is really made up of these ancient dark holes, then this would help explain the shape of the universe as it appears today. However, most astrophysicists now favor the WIMPs hypothesis, arguing that it seems much more likely that there is a massive, weakly interacting particle that was created in the conditions of the Big Bang, which we simply haven't discovered yet, and that this is the source of the dark matter halos that we can only observe via their gravitational influence on the galaxies of the visible universe.
Paradoxically, because of the tidal forces we mentioned before, the bigger a black hole gets, the slower it can grow. And as it turns out, the slower it can shrink as well. Hawking radiation decreases as a black hole gets bigger, meaning that the biggest black holes in the universe are going to be around for a really long time. Black holes like Sagittarius A, weighing millions of solar masses, will still be around when every star in the universe finally runs out of fuel and dies. When galaxies slowly go dark and the universe is all but dead, these behemoths will continue on for trillions of years. How long? Well, it's not the sort of thing you can easily imagine, but it's something like a million trillion 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 years. That's a one followed by 84 zeros, by the way, a number your brain just can't deal with. This is the black hole era, and for all intents and purposes, the overwhelming majority of life in the universe is going to end up this way. Black holes will be the only thing left. Yet even this won't be the end. Long after the universe is cold and dead, long after protons themselves have begun to decay into quarks and the universe is returning to a primordial state, black holes will continue to tick away, slowly radiating away their energy, until finally they will have become so small that their tidal forces will suddenly ignite all the matter halos around them in enormous, universe-shattering explosions of energy. For brief moments in the cold and dead universe, bright lights will appear again. Perhaps even some stars and planets might form for a few billion more years. But in no time, on these time scales anyway, there will be nothing left, and the universe will have finally died out for good. Thank you.